got an Ithaca model 49. There's a 49R and a 49S. This is the S. This is, or a saddle gun, some people will call it that. This is the single shot. The R is the repeater. If you look right here, it looks like a magazine tube on this one. On the single shot, they look very, very similar, but on the R, you have a tube down here that is the actual magazine. And whenever you rack it, it automatically feeds it. It's a repeater. This is a single shot, and so when you rack this, it will eject. It has an ejector that throws that spent cartridge out, but you have to hand load consecutive rounds. It's very important that you do not use the teardown instructions that you may find out there for, for one on the other because they are not the same. There are some similarities, but they are different. Another very important thing to remember is the direction that the pins would get knocked out of. These pins are designed to only go in one from one side, and we'll get into that later in the video. But um, with this, actually we may not. Uh, what we're doing on this one is the ejector, the uh, case ejector has, was given to me out of the gun. You gotta love it whenever you're just handed something and some parts and say, hey, fix it. So anyways, we're going to be repairing this. Probably not gonna do a full tear down. The scope of this doesn't include that. Uh, but that's what we're going to do. It's clear. Got to remove the uh, butt plate. You look down in there, it is kind of a, it's a square head, but it's got a flat groove in it for a flat head. That way if you had to use a wrench, I'm not sure what size socket that is, uh, it's probably a 12 point, but you could slip it over that or use a flat head. There you can see what I meant. What I was talking about, this is actually a 6.12 millimeter and it will fit right over that. If you need to use a 12 millimeter socket, you can. This is the hammer spring back here. This is my vacuum cleaner belt. You've seen me use a number of times. And refrain from using this. You don't want to damage that. What I mean is to push against. It's easy to, I almost reached up there and grabbed a hole to do that. And you don't want to do that. Got a little dirt falling off of there. Your stock stud back here. You look down in there, that is actually the hammer spring. There you go. Put those oily parts down in a different tray. So this is looking right down into the base after removing that stock stud. This is the plunger for your hammer here. If you reach on in there, 
you're gonna find that washer there see that you want to go ahead and get that out uh, that washer can be lost very easily there we go right there we're going to be removing that Phillips screw, dry, screw so we can get our forearm out and that off the barrel band. I like to wiggle back and forth a little bit sometimes to make sure I get that, that bit, the tip of that seated down in there. Like I'll, I'll turn a few turns and then I'll wiggle it back again and walk it back down in. Remove our screw right here. I work back and forth. And if it doesn't want to come loose at first, just stop and make sure you got the right wrench. Make sure that everything's good. And if you have to, you can use a little heat on this part here. Shield your shield your wood. We're going to remove our forearm and our lower tube. This is a set screw that goes through down to the barrel. All you got to do is just loosen it up. It'll come right off of there. If you notice, since this is not the R, it's just all kind of a dummy. It's all blank. It's just, it's, it has no function. Now, with our pins, what I was talking about, you look, notice the way that these pins are here. Now I'm going to turn it over. We're going to look here. You see where each one of these pins has, see you see a little mark there? Right here it's real good. See the three little spots there? Those are actually where it's been, uh, they're splined basically. You cannot drive it through from this side over. You have to drive it through from this side, which is actually from the left side to the right. We're gonna drive out our trigger spring, or trigger pin. left side of the receiver to the right.
here's our trigger. Now you've got a detent and a spring right down there. I'm going to go ahead and drive that pin the rest of the way out with a longer punch. There we go. Now next, I'm going to remove our hammer. I'm going to go with a brass punch to begin with here. There's our pen. Right here, this pin being larger will be easier to see. See the grooves in it right there? Those grooves are what I was showing you. Those are made, they expand this side of it, and so this side's smaller in diameter than this side. So. Turn this so you all can see. Hold it that way and out. Remember left to right. This lever assembly is built in. It's, uh, it doesn't disassemble. You've got your detent here, and short of getting these rivets out, as far as I can tell, it does not disassemble. It is listed as a single part. So the best thing to do, I'm gonna ultrasonic clean it, um, but you can just soak it in some, like some Kim Dip or something like that, some Berryman's Kim Dip, and uh, That'll help you out. I'm going to drive this out. Brass punch. that pin, see this big notch? That was in there like that. 
that pin was on the right hand side. All right, this is going to, you got to pay good attention here. The notch is going to go to the right hand side of the receiver. Now, your block here, there's a lot of stuff going on here. First and foremost, see that spring up right in there? You've got a detent right down in here. So we're going to get that out of there. Detent out. There we go. Now, for this if you look right here, there's a little bitty spring in your firing pin and a pin. The fact that it's in the gun holds that in. So, what you can do, take your firing pin and lift it up and just start, just grab that spring once you've lifted it up. Now that pin We'll drop right out. There you go. That's your firing pin. We'll go ahead and take our lever out just so we can. One last thing on this, once you've got this stuff out, you've got one last part you may have forgotten about, and it is the hammer plunger pin. You can just turn, tilt it forward and over, and this guy will come out of there. That's where it goes in. I'm going to remove this pin. Pin here. We're going to drive out.
almost out of there. That pin is in there. I did what I was telling you guys not to. Uh, I made a, it's an honest mistake here. On the barrel pin on this, this pin right here, I actually ended up driving it through the way I told you all not to. Uh, you've got your splines here. Well, this is, this one was unique. All of the other ones, they had to be driven out from the right to the left. On this one pin, it needed to be driven out from the left to the right. Well, I had gotten it started and it went just easy, just fine, and then it got a little tough and then it was easy. It, it was not a big deal. And uh, But once I started driving it out the, you know, the other side, I realized what I had done. No harm, no foul. Um, I've got I did, it didn't harm anything. I'll be able to take care of this, but it just goes to show that it's very easy for something like that to happen. Uh, I was unable to see the small little splines on that side, and I already had precedence for all the other ones being one direction. So just note that you know it's it's easy to happen to anybody, and just because one of them, you know, you got two or three that are driven through one way, don't assume. There you go. I've got this vacuum cleaner belt wrapped around. There are all kinds of fixtures and things that you can use for barrels that, that work better than this. Again, this is something that everybody has available to them and it works very well. I've got it wrapped around a number of times and then I have this vise tight. I'm gonna run a pair of pliers handle right down through there. And it's a good idea to go ahead and mark, put you a mark right in the middle and right here to show where this thing was set up for head spacing reasons. And get you a little mark there to where you can get that re receiver lined back up. And I had to work on this a little bit back and forth. I've already loosened it a little bit. And I had to go back and forth with it to get it how I wanted it, or get get it how I wanted it, get it loose. There we go. A lot of galling, a lot of galling in there trying to get that loose. A lot of galling in there. This is how that will fit down in there. Pull that out of here. This is what was galling everything. I can't tell if it's from when it was originally broken or someone trying to get it out earlier. You see right there at the end of my thumbnail where that has been mashed in there.
right here that's been mashed in and it's keeping the ejector from coming out. I'm going to take this punch, see if I can open that up a little bit. There's the new and the old. Now I gotta repair that. I have turned this brass rod down and this is on the Ithaca barrel. Made it fit in there. It's got a little bit of a taper to it. That way I can make sure that I, it's gonna be really nice and tight. I can hammer it down in there. And then once this brass is in there and hammered in tight, I can weld this area here. And I don't have to worry about it distorting from heat. I can actually attach something out here to help wick the heat away more. Um, and that'll also keep that formed instead of letting it droop down. Blasted just the end here. And uh, it's all right that I blasted it that part of the chamber as well because I'm using a, a real weak aggregate and so I don't, I'm not worried about it doing any damage there. It, it, the only thing it was going to do there is clean and that's what I wanted. Now I'm going to clean this with some brake parts cleaner or alcohol to make sure that we get any of the grit or anything that might be down in there out and uh, weld it up. Actually a uh, changed my mind just a little bit more I got to looking at it uh, you can see I've actually cut that out and I've beveled that that way I'll have I know that I've got good clean virgin metal that I'm gonna be welding to and I'm not dealing with the possibility of having trash and stuff that got jammed in there from uh, that hammer hitting it multiple times uh, this way I know I'm gonna have a good weld Tungsten's a little bit big for doing this small, but I don't have any more. Uh, this is the only tungsten I've got left, so I'm going to have to go with it.
Now I purposely built that up and I'm going to file it back down where it needs to be. It looks ugly like it is right there, but I just wanted to blob it, build it up, let it cool a little, blob it some more, and then I went pedal down to just kind of fuse it all together. Here we've got the Ithaca, and uh, this is where I have repaired where the extractor area was damaged. It's still a little out of round to fit back in to where it goes. So I'm going to have to do a little bit more hand filing on that. And where this thing is marred in there, we're going to get uh, something in there and really clean it up. It's fairly smooth, but we're going to clean it up a little bit more. Here I've got in my smaller drill press, that's just a flap wheel. Normal old flap wheel. And just in my little grizzly drill press. If anybody's looking for a good drill press, I might have this one up for sale. Um, I mean, it's small, but it's a it's a real good quality drill press. Uh, let's see here. What I'm going to be doing is going right in here and getting this cleaned up. I've got the belt set up on this where it is on its fastest speed belt on the top there and this one will kind of get it on its fastest speed and clean now. I'm going to use this to get this part of the barrel as well here.
I think that's got us. I think we're in much better shape than what we were.